and welcome to Getting to Know ACS with Tracy and Jasmine. So today we're going to continue our series on domestic violence and we have another guest from the Family Advocacy Program, Stephen White. He is a Family Advocacy Program educator. Hello, Stephen. How are you doing today? Good morning. I'm doing fine, thank you. Okay. How about yourself, ladies? We're, we're doing yeah. good. So, Stephen, if you don't mind, can you tell us just a little bit about yourself before we get into our whole conversation? Uh, yes. Uh, I am a 22-year uh, veteran here on Fort Bliss. Uh, retired first on as an air defender. And um, Shout out to 88. Yes, shout out to Air Defense Artillery <laughs> and Mighty Fine 32nd and, and uh, 32nd Double AMDC and 11th Brigade. And uh, I am so proud to be here and be a part of the you know Family Advocacy Program as an educator because uh, you know since I retired, you know if I had to work, I just wanted to work, uh, whether it be ACS where I'm at now or Soldiers for Life to still give back to the community, soldiers and their family members. So it, this is just a uh, joy for me. Okay, so that is awesome. So we're talking about, we're doing a series on domestic violence. So one of the things that um, people may or may not be aware of are what the warning signs are of someone who could p potentially be an abuser. So we're gonna have you here today to talk about some of the warning signs of someone who has that potential to be an abuser. How's that sound? Well, it sounds fine. I mean, uh, the numbers army-wide are rising. Uh -huh. And um, as an educator, uh, it's our job to get out there and facilitate the information and give them tools and techniques, you know, to uh, have a better lifestyle so they could be a better soldier, a better family member, and, and to get these numbers down. Okay. Yeah. So part of getting those numbers down is to be aware yes and being an educator that's what you do is to educate our public about um, what domestic violence looks like okay so let's go ahead and jump into it so what are some of the warning signs for domestic violence now I w I'm going to share a few this morning some of the traits now I know it could be more than this you know especially depending on the situation out there and the abuser uh, I would like to first start off, you know, we're talking about intensity. We start to talk about that first. I'll share with you an uh, individual that might be in a relationship that's uh, especially new to a relationship when they just over the top, you know, being very possessive and um, uh, want to be controlling, uh, especially when they just got in. And, uh, and you know, the, the, this one sign, you know, that should, you know, Bell should be going off automatically, you right, know, right. especially somebody just coming on board and all of a sudden, you know, you demanded a whole lot of my time and wanting us to be a couple like, hold on, slow down, pump your brakes. Right. You know? But it does happen out there. Are there know. some examples you can give us? Because in today's society, I feel like some of those movies amplify the possession. And now I feel like a lot of the generation is like, oh, that's my twin flame or that's my soulmate because yeah. he's so or she's so intense on how much she wants me, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Uh, especially when they come on strong, especially with your family and friends and being a charmer or um, uh, that really charismatic. Yeah. And really trying to get to know your kids and everything else if for those individuals that have children out there and um, really just want to be around all the time and constantly calling you and texting you is like, can I breathe? You know what I'm yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think one of the things too um, about intensity too is, and you kind of elaborated on that, is moving that relationship along really quickly. You know, it's like, yeah. okay, I went on one date with you, now you the screensaver on my phone, and <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, you just all that. So it's important that people realize when we're talking about intensity is like you said that over the top. I want I want this relationship. We don't went on one date, and now I want you to be exclusive. Yes. With me. <laughs> and then the next time you go out or the second or third, you introduce it. This is my boyfriend or this is my girlfriend. Exactly. So yeah. or or as Jasmine, you this is my twin flame. <laughs> oh, it's like, it's like crazy. I'm like you guys don't even know each other. Relax. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. So I think that's that's important because sometimes people take that intensity mm -hmm. and they think that's flattering. It's like yes. oh they want to be with me. You know they just like me so much. I'm all this. And they really take that as like, oh, this is this is this reflects on me as being wanted, 
you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But really, they're setting you up. Yes. For what's to come. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what's what's another one besides intensity? Oh, when we start going down that road, as far as uh, that individual is just so jealous. You know, especially when you're around, you know, uh, say the opposite sex or yeah. around your friends or Could your family. Could be same sex too. Yes. You know, and they really get, uh, they are so possessive. There you go. It's better word for them. Possessive. Yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? You can't speak, you know, without their approval or you, the individual might can't dress a certain way or go out somewhere and they're trying to track them down every second of the day or trying to uh, go through their things, Mm -hmm. you know, especially the texts, the email, and the Facebook, Mm -hmm. you know. So, oh, yeah, there are individuals out there that, you know, this happens to, and it's unfortunate. Yeah, yeah. So when you're talking about jealousy, is jealousy, I mean, I think most people, to some extent, are jealous or get jealous about stuff. So when you're talking about it in the realm of domestic violence, what does jealousy look like there? Well, I would I would uh, say you know a person acting you know behaving very irrational. Okay. You know what I mean, and um, they just overreact. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, and then want to start trying to play the blame game, but I don't want to jump too far ahead because well, the blame is one of the topics we'll hit you know shortly. But that individual is just you know I say out of line and out of order. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, out of line and out of order. Yes. So Yeah, and, it, and it's kind of like what with uh, domestic violence when you have jealousy it's kind of like you know it could be passive aggressive type jealousy it's like okay i see you looking i see you looking at that person oh just wait till we get home yeah yeah and yeah. Then especially don't want to be around your friends or family or especially you know uh individuals their soldier when they have the org days or any type of functions at the units and you know, I saw the individual looking at you or was you flirting or, you know, giving them, you know, impression like you might be interested. And then, like you said, once they get home or get in the car, then it escalates, you know, more severe. Uh, so I guess uh, like putting it in the perspective of social media, they're kind of promoting that then, huh? Where you're like looking at the phone and then the person finds it and they smack them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That would kind of be the kind of the same thing, but in that realm. Yeah, Yeah. and I'm I'm glad you brought that up with the social media because then they're looking at, oh, why you keep liking this person's pictures? Mm -hmm. You know, when you start looking at, like, the Instagrams and it's like, oh, I see you keep visiting them or you're always commenting on Facebook. So getting jealous on that, you know, what, I'm not enough for you? Yes. You know, it's like, oh, you don't need, and I may not even know this person because they may even be jealous of, an actor or someone that oh. you're, you know, that you're following. You know how we follow people on the social media. The influencers. The yeah. influencers. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's like, I don't have no, you know, there's no way I'm ever going to meet this person, right. but yet they're jealous and they're making a big deal mm-hmm. out of that. Okay. So that kind of over the top jealousy like that. And then when you bring up social media, being jealous, that jealousy, they have, you know, where they want to see your Facebook pages, your Instagram. Give me your phone. Mm-hmm. I need to see what what you got going on here. Mm-hmm. So, or they or they rambling through your bags or your personal belongings, especially your purses. Uh-huh. Okay, or, or or wallet. Yeah, or wallet. <laughs> yes. Okay, and it'd be like, uh, what's your password? You know what I mean? I want to unlock your phone or whatever the case may be. So, yes, it, it, again, it's unfortunate, but it does happen out there. Okay. Yeah, and one of the things about jealousy is. It rolls into, you know, a lot of what the jealous actions that we have rolls into control, which is also one of the the traits for domestic violence. So talk a little bit about what that control, how we how that might show up. Well, when we when we start talking on the lines of control uh, and and we've had some incidents uh, share briefly uh, where uh, individual uh, dependent. A uh, service member went to NTC, and the uh, service member took all the credit cards, the ID cards, medical stuff. They had kids, and the dependent couldn't do anything. And then one of the children got sick, and they had, they called ACS, you know, to tell them, you know, what happened, what, what they was going through. And, you know, it's very important that they get in contact with the, you know, spouse so they can take the child to the hospital. And that's how we found out about it because of what the service member did. Hmm. you know, for its controlling. Right. And then there was another case that came through the office uh, where 
the, the situation was uh, at org day. And uh, of course it escalated. They had on the outfit and you know, the soldiers, you know, saw and you know, the spouse thought that people were looking at her, you know, because of the outfit the spouse had on. And then they got in the car and it, it went even further. Okay. You know what I mean? So it, it's, it's, we have some war stories out there, yeah. you know, and it, again, it's unfortunate. So I, I like how you brought up about the, the outfit because part of control is I'm going to tell you what you can wear. I'm going to tell you what you can't wear, mm -hmm. you know, and then I'm going to be in control of who you can talk to yes. and who you can't, you know, that whole control thing, you know, telling you um, as far, even go as far as your hair. Yes. And, and you know, and I look at your, your, your nails, it's like, oh, no, I don't like that. You know, just really controlling yeah. just a, 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 your life, you know, mm -hmm. and that interaction, you know, when you're you're talking about that, they check your uh, phone, check your emails, um, checking your social media, that type of thing, or not even allowing you to be on those type things. Or even as far as who you can speak to or interact with, you know, especially when you're out there or at a social gathering or a, a unit function. Right. Yeah. You know, or tell you, you know, if you can visit friends or family. Right. You know, that's a very, uh, the big one right there, especially when you tell them an uh, individual they can't talk or, or go see their family members, you know, and again, red flags. Right. And when you start talking about um, not allowing somebody to see their family members or see their friends or only, you know, kind of being select, you select who their friends are. Yes. You know, and a lot of times those friends are the abuser's friends. Mm -hmm. Someone who's going to have their back is like, oh, you know, you go talk to them. Oh, you know, that's okay. What he said or she said, it's okay. So you they know. change their whole social circle to benefit the abuser. Exactly. Yes, yes because oh. they've been under control. And okay. so part of that, you know, especially with that, um, if you're in any situation where you're not allowed to see your family, that's isolation. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that's the next one is, is that isolation that we um, that somebody who is being abused goes through. So you want to elaborate a little more on the isolation? Yeah. And then, you know, that forbidding that individual, like you said, talk, you know, uh, visiting their friends and family and then, uh, you know, trying to do the blame game on them or ridicule them or, you know, tell them they're not good enough, I'm the only one good enough for you and mm -hmm. I love you and all that. It, it, it almost goes down on the line of, um, you know, brainwashing. Yeah, you know right. What I mean? Like, I, I'm, going, I'm the only one good enough for you, pretty much. Right, right. And know. they have to establish a dominance at this point because, like, thinking, once you first start a relationship, if somebody's like, you can't see your family, that's not going to fly. So it would have to be after some time to get that established? Well, actually, that goes back, you know, that isolation. This is all, it goes all the way back to that intensity. Because at ah. the very beginning, I'm grooming you to start being under yeah. my control, being under my control, basically. And, and, I, and want you to, I want you dependent on me. Exactly. Yes. Oh, okay. You know, so all of these, you know, if you think about them, they all tie in together. Yes. You know, it, right, it right. all comes together. And if you, like I said, how you can say intensity, I'm setting it up. It's like, oh, you know, I always want you to be with me. You know, just be with, you don't have to go see them. That leads into that isolation because before you know mm -hmm. it, I'm so used to you just saying, oh, I want to be with you. You know, then all of a sudden I've lost my friends. I haven't seen my family in months, mm -hmm. you know because they have already started grooming you to. So it's not as direct. No, it's yeah. not. Because, oh. we, you know, and, and I'm glad you said that, uh, Jasmine, and, and Stephen, you can probably um, attest to this. It's not about being direct. It's little things that add up over time. Yes. Okay. And before you know it, because people will always say, oh, you know, you should have figured that out when you first got in that relationship. But right. it's those little subtle things that just start leading up, and before you know it, time has passed. Yeah, you know, and then you again, you're dependent on that individual. Yeah, you know what I mean. And then again, unfortunately, especially if children are involved. Yes, you know yes. what I mean. You gotta you're trying to protect the children. So some, st you know, whether it be male or female, stay in that relationship. You know, because they have became so self reliant on that individual. You know, it's like. 
wait a minute, it, basically, he had, you know, almost took your soul. <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, 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 yeah. it's in, in what you said is very true. It's, it's kind of like, it's, it's kind of like brainwashing, mm -hmm. you know, because that's why I said it's, it's kind of, you know, you're grooming them to take that abuse. And it's easier if they've come from a history of domestic violence. Yes. Because this is what I've grown up seeing. This is what I consider to be normal. So when someone comes along and they're treating you the way you saw your parents or your uh, parental uh, Guardian. figures, guardians, yeah. if you see how they maneuvered, then it's like, okay, well, th that's what my father went through, that's what my mother went through, or whatever the case may be, then you think that's normal. So it's easy for somebody to come in. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Because, I'm, you know, I'm glad you said that because uh, my wife and I watched Respect with uh, Aretha Franklin, you uh -huh. know, this weekend. And what you saying about the traits from the past, from how her upbringing was, what she saw with her parents. And then when she started getting abused, you know, as she was growing up, thought it was the, a norm, you know, and, and accepted the blame or he didn't mean to do that and thought it was normal. Right. You know what I mean? But again, times is changing. You can't do that anymore. Right. You know what I mean? But it, it, it's, 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 it's sad. Yeah, it yeah. is how many people, you know, go through that. And I think that's why it's important that we're having these conversations mm -hmm. about it to get more word out. So, you know, we talked about isolation. So let's go on and talk about that criticism. And you kind of touched on that already when you were talking about, oh, I'm the only one that wants you. So <laughs> Yeah, I'm the only one that wants you, you know, you know, getting to the name calling and, you know, uh, trying to almost basically destroy their self-esteem. You yeah. know, you ugly and you stupid. Nobody wants you. I'm the only one for you, you know. And after a while, especially over time, an individual may start believing that. Mm -hmm. They do. You know what I mean? Because, you know, especially, like you said, what has happened to them in the past. Right. You know what I mean? And it's, uh, it, it's, it's, really, it's really sad. And and I like what you said, what you said about you know they start believing it, you know it, it gets to the point that you if you get told something about yourself so much, pretty soon you do believe that's who you are. If someone is constantly telling you you're stupid, you know you're worthless, mm -hmm. and that is being pounded into your head on a regular basis, then pretty soon you believe you're stupid. It's like you know what I can't do that. I'm not capable of that. Mm. And so with the criticism, when someone starts criticizing you as the person versus criticizing your action, mm -hmm. that's when it's a problem. Yes. You know. And then also um, when they start protecting the abuser because they start believing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. They find ways, and they, and they believe it because it's internal. Exactly. You know, yeah, they are right. You know, maybe they are right. Maybe it is me. You know, and, you know, a lot of times that's not the case. You know, exactly. It's like, well, you know what? I didn't clean the house up quite like I, I, I should have. So, yeah, they have a reason to come in and say these things about me. Because, like you said, they already told you mm -hmm. you're worthless. So when I do something and the abuser comes back and says, well, you did, you did this or you didn't do that. Well, you know what? They're right. Mm -hmm. You're right, because I've been told this over and over by the abuser. Again, yeah. it's that whole, you know, getting into your psyche kind and of thing. And for that one, I'd like to point out that it affects, it can affect everyone, whether you have a master's degree, a bachelor's degree, like that does not, I've seen somebody with like a degree, super successful career, and somebody was talking to that person like that, and I was just like, I never thought that that would happen to an individual who was successful in my eyes, but because she was just like, am I successful? I said, oh, my God. Like, mm -hmm. and, and that's true. You know, yeah. that that's exactly what happens. It's like, okay, I even though I have all these, um, I'm successful in this realm, yes. but I have someone in the background telling me, you wouldn't have got that without me. And only yeah. has a high school diploma. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> or, or, or not even. Not even, right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, but then. I think that was the most shocking for me, like how that can work, like with how the mind works and how, like, all this goes into play. Yeah. And then also protecting the kids. 
right. especially when the children are there that and they true. see and they're hearing all this stuff that's going on. And then again, you putting those walls up and blinders and you're, and you're accepting and taking the abuse. Right, mm-hmm. right. And people will stay in situations. I've heard, you know, where they stay in situations because I want my child to have their father. I want my child to have their mother. Mm. Both parents in the home. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. I, I want them to grow up in both, you know, with both parents. But is that really, you have, like I said, now your child is being conditioned right, to, to think that that's, a, that's how a relationship is supposed to work. Yeah, that that behavior is acceptable. Exactly. Yes. yes. So, yes. you know, correct. all of those go together. And then one thing some people don't think about is sabotage. You know, when um, someone is coming, the abuser is sabotaging that uh, victim. Oh, yeah. Um, with that being said, you know, especially when you're trying to keep them at home, you know, don't want them to work, mm-hmm. you know, affecting them, trying to get an interview, or if they are working, you know, uh, they might be calling out a lot, or you're making excuses for them not to go to work, or uh, taking the car keys, or mm. their purse, and just doing things again to be in control. Right. It, it, okay. and it is about that. Yes. And you know, and this is one point where I want to make uh, make sure that we're clear. It isn't always the service member abusing the family right. member. Sometimes that family member can abuse the service member. Yes. You yes. know, so especially you know when it comes to sabotage, and it's not, and it's not always males who are the abuser. Females can be abusers just like males can be abusers, you know. Yes, we've, we've had uh, cases where uh, a young troop was uh, preparing for the board, uh, thought he his uh, uniform was good until, you know, he, you know, he placed everything in the car. You know, Tommy got to the barracks after, you know, finished PT, went to go put it on his uniform to get prepared for the board, and his uniform had bleach spots on it. And the rhythms was all shredded off, mm. okay, because his wife wanted to show him who was boss. Right. Who's you know, in control. Who's in right. control, yes. Which is not a quick fix at all. Oh, like no. That no. takes hours, if not. Yes. Yeah. You know, we're not even going to talk about, you know, the studying time. Right, that right. Uniform. But that uniform, oh, yeah, that, that's, I, that's I can remember, yeah. you know, watching, it's like, okay, with the ruler, having the ruler out and making sure everything's straight right and all dress. that stuff. Yes. Yeah, you know, so... You, when you think about that, then that's a form of sabotage. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's why I said it, it, it goes both ways. Sabotage goes both ways. You yes, know? it does. I mean, and abuse goes both ways. It's, it's not, and I know we we have a tendency to use the um, vocabulary that she got abused. You know, we're always making the female the victim. Mm-hmm. But the female can be the abuser just like the male can be an abuser it goes both ways yes and it's unfortunate that it doesn't get reported you know because we as males you know suck it up drive on or you better not hit that woman or of course you shouldn't hit a woman but we won't report it because i'm a man exactly Mm -hmm. you know what i mean and you know what am i especially if you're in a leadership position what what would my you know subordinates think or what would the commander think or the first are you know right my wife beating on me we had a case uh where a service member was, you know, thought he could go to the chain of command and report it and everything else, and they didn't believe it. He had to go as far as putting it on Facebook Live mm-hmm. to show them, hey, my wife is abusing me. Right. So before I lose my career, I got proof. Yeah, so exactly. that's what he had to do. He had to do Facebook Live, and then they believed him. Yeah. Do and you it, think it takes men longer to realize what's happen on, uh, happening, like more so the subtle ones, like not the physical abuse, but... Uh, like maybe the manipulation or the exactly all that does it take them long because I feel like it's more like wait is this really happening and I I think it it would probably it's kind of like a sense of denial yes you know it's like this isn't happening because I I feel like and I don't have the statistics to show this but um, I feel like with females when it comes to female on male abuse of course they can be physically abused but I think that comes into a lot of play with the um, psychological abuse, you yes. know, where I'm going to beat you down. You know, it's like, pfft, you can't get nowhere without me. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm the one that's been uh, doing these uh, classes for you. I'm the one that's been studying, you know, helping you study. You wouldn't be there without me. 
Mm. You know, I'm the one that pulled you up. (laughs) So. (laughs) And and then the other thing, too, you know, just like, you know, again, like you said, it's not always the females, the male. The males don't had a past relationship, a bad history with dealing with females. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And trying to break that norm and that stigma. You know what I mean? Because, again, what they, you know, that individual, especially when you're trying to be open and want to tell her, you know, that new mate everything about you, and they will play on your weakness because you told them everything and told them what happened in your past, and then over time it plays against you in some, uh, you know, relationships. Yeah. Right, yeah. exactly. Mm. And so another thing, another trait, you know, for um, someone who's an abuser is that blame game. Oh, I, th- I think <laughs> that, that, we had to scratch your head yes, on that one. <laughs> yes, because you know, uh, especially when we get into that physical, even though, it, like you said, it could be psychological too. You know, where I want you to depend on me because you you made me angry or you made me do this to you. Uh, I didn't mean it. It's your fault. And again, playing you know the the, the mental games. Right. You know what I mean. Where I'm going to take the emphasis off of me and put it on you. Because you was the problem, or you, this is what you, the situation you put me in, this is why you deserve what I did to you. Exactly. You know what I mean? Because you made me feel this way. So this was your punishment. Mm. Right. You know? And oh my goodness. And I think that should be on the top of the list <laughs> yeah. the blame game. The blame game. And again, of course, you constantly hear about it and constantly get beat, getting beat down about it and, you know, hear it in your ears always. After a while, you might believe it. You start and believing it. Does that one stem more from childhood and a lot too? Because you know, with I, I or think, not so much. I think on the blame one is is bl- is lack of taking self accountability. Okay, okay. You know, it's like i for and it's you know if you notice they not only do this the blame in their relationships you know their uh, their romantic relationships but they may even do this in their professional relationships. Oh, I'm not getting promoted because such and such and such they don't like me you know mm-hmm. they're out to get me mm-hmm. you know but did you study for, like did you study for the board mm-hmm. you know or or did you spend five minutes looking over the book but right. it's someone it's always someone else's fault mm-hmm. you know they don't they have a tendency not to take self you know they don't have self-awareness right. and, and then self-responsibility so, yeah yeah you know it's it's always someone else's fault and and when you look at those romantic relationships and the physical uh, abuse that happens in those relationships, it's like, you made me do this. Mm-hmm. If if you had done this, then I wouldn't have had to do this to you. Mm. I wouldn't have had to say that to you, you know. Well, if you would have got that right, then I wouldn't have had to say it, that you were stupid, you know. So it's always that they're always ready to blame someone else for their shortcomings. Yes. You Got know. It. So it's, 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 I don't think that one is necessarily um, from childhood. I think it's more about manipulation. Yeah, okay. Master manipulator, yeah. yes. Uh, the, the, that's one of those narcissistic, and we, we've had a lot of conversations yeah. about that. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. one of those narcissistic traits. It's like, you know, I can do no wrong. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's always someone else's fault, you know, okay. why, why I'm not thriving. So mm-hmm. take that self accountability, and then the last one, which is kind of obvious, but it's not obvious, is anger. What you got to say about that? <laughs> All <laughs> the anger. threatening and want to pick fights. Uh, you know the uh, over the top outbursts, uh, uh, jumping to conclusions, overreacting, and again, it's your fault. You mm-hmm. made me do it. You know what I mean? Uh, again, especially when we're around folks, you know, one of us, somebody looking at them or someone speak to them, you know, want to pull them to the side and have a serious conversation with, you know, with that individual. Or all of a sudden you can see that, you know, them hands moving and pointing <laughs> and everything else. Oh, yeah, it's happened. <laughs> I, I can testify to that. Had to walk over there and calm a few soldiers down in my day, you know, especially at them org days. Oh, well, I ain't going to say the org days. The uh, the balls. The balls. The balls. Yeah. You know, because everybody, yeah. you know, don't get to see individual spouses, you know, 
dressed up and everything else and you'll have you know folks you know i didn't know that was your spouse you know and then again thinking they flirting and all that other stuff and they could just be having a friendly conversation right or it's like i didn't even see that person looking at me yeah you know so it's crazy but you know the thing about anger and, and i just want to make this clear on anger everybody gets angry mm-hmm. yes you know but is when you're angry how are you expressing that anger? Because there's healthy ways to express anger and there's unhealthy ways to express anger. You know, so somebody said, well, they go through the house and punching holes in the walls. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Is that no. healthy? Right. <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> how long are you going to continue to punch holes in the walls? Because that uh, wall hurts. Oh, yes. You know, and pretty soon I'm going to have to go for a softer target. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, you know. So it's, it's when you're talking about the anger, I think it's, like you said, that outburst, mm-hmm. those overreactions, you know. Um, oh, threatening. Threatening. You know, I'm going to hurt you, or next time you're going to do that, you better hope I don't kill you, uh, you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then, you know, I'm mad at, I'm, I'm angry, so I'm throwing my phone across the room, you know, or throwing my remote control away. When you start throwing stuff, you know, that's not healthy. No. And, and I'm not saying that everybody that throws stuff is going to be an abuser, but just be aware that that's kind of a a, a warning sign. Yeah. Yes. And I want to touch on what you said about threats. And this is important. You know, what a lot of people don't understand about a threat. If you say something to me and I take it as a threat, then guess what? It's a threat. It's a threat. I don't care what your intention is because mm-hmm. <laughs> you could say, oh, I was just joking. Mm-hmm. But no, if I take it as a threat, guess what? It's a threat. Oh, yes. Yeah. And so, you know, one thing about all these things that we just talked about, uh, those those eight warning signs, they're not the only warning signs, but those are the warning, you know, some warning signs that you can look for. And it's not necessarily that people, everybody who has these warning signs, you know, these signs, that does not mean that they're going to be an abuser. But that's why they're red flags. Yes, they are. You know, and the more of these traits that they have, the more likely it's going to gonna escalate, you know. And I want to make sure that people understand how it builds. Yeah. You yes. Because if, if you think about it, if, if, and if you go back and listen to this uh, podcast again, just think about how each one of those traits built on the other one. Mm-hmm. And it finally escalated to that anger, that outburst. So it might start off as, psych, you know, uh, emotional abuse or psychological abuse, but then where does it end up? Yeah, it intensifies. Mm-hmm. You so, know, and then that could be, you know, the difference between life and death for an individual. Yeah. Exa- exactly. Or a child taking that individual's life, you know, because the child was in the home and they saw this abuse and they got tired of, you know, dad beating on mom or mom beating on dad, mm-hmm. and they took matters in their own hands. Exactly. I never even thought about that. That's a that's a good point. Yeah. So, you know, this is it's 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 a somber topic, but it is a topic that needs to be discussed. Yes. You know, definitely. So, um, Jasmine, do you have anything you want to add or ask about? Um, no, okay. no. I think I was more most intrigued about how because at first, when you think about it, when you think about these eight signs. I like there is no way somebody can just come in and be like, nah, you're going to isolate. But looking at how you guys built on it and how it like slowly snowballs into this, exactly. I can see now because I, I didn't understand it before. Like, how does somebody take you away from your friends and family? But if in the beginning it's so intense that they're just like, hang out with me, hang out with me, hang out with me. You might not feel comfortable going to your friends exactly. because they're going to be like, oh, you got a boyfriend that just left us. Mm-hmm. And now you just feel judged. There you go. So that's why I, I was kind of like staring at you guys like, this is crazy. <laughs> like, so, yeah, to see, because I was, uh, yeah, like I said, that was probably the most. Yeah, that aha moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, Stephen, is there anything that you want to add before we. Um, oh, yes. Uh, if individuals out there see warning signs, you know, because HCS, we do uh, have classes with stress management and anger management. Uh, right now we're doing it virtually, you know, highly recommended because when we go out and do a, and conduct our briefs, we, we always, you know, telling the individuals, hey, we are here for you, you know, right. use our resources, they're free, you know, whether it be yourself or the family member or someone in your formation, 
you know, uh, share share the information because right now folks think ACS is a bad thing, and it's not. We're here for the soldiers and their family members. So use us because we're on the prevention side of the house. Mm -hmm. Because once you get on the intervention side of the house, then someone else is going to decide your fate. So yeah. I will hope and pray that uh, our service members would, you know, leave the military, you know, whether they ETS or retire compared to being put out of the military. So, again, you know, use our services. They're free of charge. We're here for you. And uh, we want everyone to, you know, live a healthy life. Yes. Yes, definitely. So thank you again so much for being with us today, Stephen, and, you know, going over these traits with us and, and you know, giving that information out to the community. Um, one of the things that we like to do on our podcast at the end, we like to ask our guests what brings them joy. So, Stephen, I'm going to ask you, what brings you joy working in a family advocacy program? What brings me joy? Uh, the soldiers and their family members um, being able to give back and, um, you know, still continue to serve. Yeah. Uh, Fort Bliss has grown so tremendously. I've been here since 93 and uh for me it is it gives me great joy each and every day to interact with the soldiers and their family members still and still be a part and being a uh an active i say uh just uh being able to change attitudes that's the only way we want to be able to change behavior change the way of thinking and that brings me joy yes you know because uh the soldiers and their family members they need us and if I can just, like you say, if, it, if I can just change one mind or one heart, it, that gives me, you know, a sense of accomplishment each and every day I come to work. That is awesome because you usually sound a whole lot more enthusiastic about that yeah. speech when you say it. <laughs> but, you know, I'm, I'm going to take what I can get today. <laughs> but what I want to make sure everyone's aware, I don't happen to have the number here, but if you need the number for the National Domestic Violence Hotline, you can call ACS um, and get that number. And ACS's phone number is Jasmine. For the admin office or the yeah. victim advocates? Either one. Okay, well, the admin, admin. office is 915-568-9129. The 24-7 domestic violence hotline is 915-269-2013. Can you repeat that one? The This, this <laughs> one is 24 hours a day. Yes. Uh, and somebody will always answer. Um, so it's 915-269-2013. Yeah. I don't know any phone numbers. I'm I'm not a millennial, but I, <laughs> mm -hmm. all my numbers are in my phone. That's yes. who I'm calling if I ever get stuck on the side of the road, okay? Okay. <laughs> I'll be like, this is the only number I know. This is the only number I know, okay? So if, if anything, if you're in a situation and you need to get out of the situation or you just want to get information, yes. You can call either um, ACS uh, Family Advocacy Program, the admin, or you can call um, the 24-hour domestic violence hotline. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I got alibi. Okay, alibi alibis, alibis, okay. alibis. Besides the anger management and stress uh, management classes, we also have, you know, couples communication mm -hmm. and stress-free marriage and stress-free parenting. So oh. the resources out there, everything is virtual right now. Our classes is an hour and a half. Uh, there are two sessions, whether it be from 11, uh, well, I'm sorry, from 10 to 1130 or 1300 to 1430. Yep. Okay, so the classes is out there. They're free. And, again, use our services, please. Okay, thank you. Yes, come yes. to ACS. Yes. So with that being said, and Stephen's little commercial on the classes that we offer, which mm -hmm. we appreciate. Oh, 2494 Ricker Road. <laughs> yes. 2494 Ricker Road. We're in the same parking lot as uh, State and Theater. And right before, if you pass uh, State and Theater and that building right next to them, is before you get to the bowling alley. Okay, there, there we go. go. <laughs> All right. Any more alibis, That's Stephen, it. before I cut it off? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, again, thank you so much for oh, joining us today. Yes. And this is Getting to Know ACS with Tracy. And Jasmine, don't forget to hit, don't forget to hit the subscribe and the bell to get notified. Bye. Bye. <laughs>